Okay, good morning class. Let's begin so I can get you off towards your weekend. I'm sure we're all looking forward to it. So let me say that I'm surprised that so many of you are still showing up for an early course, right? So good on you guys. Um, today we're going to introduce a new data type. So we have integers, we have floats, booleans. Today we're going to introduce something called the string. This is very exciting because a string is interesting enough that I can start showing you interesting things because a string is an ordered collection of single characters. Uh, and by characters here I mean things like Unicode and ASCII allowed by the computer. So uh, it's basically a list. Right? So now I can do all the fun list type of stuff. Okay, so to begin properly, anything with some exceptions um, enclosed by single quotes or double quotes is considered a string by the, by the Python interpreter. And to repeat myself, a string is an ordered collection of the characters, um, and these characters are set by organizations, right? And so you can have Unicode characters and ASCII characters, but there is an organization that sits down and says, uh, the number 400 is going to be associated with A, right? These are the people who deal with all the emojis, for instance, right? They, you have to register emoji with them before it can show up on your phone, right? So you know who to suck up to if you want to get a new emoji. Okay, so I'm going to open the shell uh, and boot up Python. <clears throat> I type in hello world, and it's just going to spit back at me, hello world. Right, the same thing happens if you type two or true, right? Any literal or constant that you type into the Python interpreter is just going to be spit back at you. The type of hello world is a string, because as I promised, we had introduced a new data type. So what happens if I type this, hello world without quotes? Hmm? No. Is that syntactically correct? No, so it's going to throw in syntax error. Syntax first, and then everything after syntax, right? So Python first has to confirm that the thing you've typed into the line is legal, and you can't put a space. A space, well, you can't put a space that's not followed by like an equal or something like that. So anyways, that's not valid syntax. What about this? Okay, now we will say hello is not defined, right? So notice, you have to put quotes around something for it to be a string. And if you remove those quotes, it, it is no longer a string. Now it's a name. Right? So please don't be confused by this nuance, because a lot of the troubles that we're going to have is due to the fact that things look so exactly similar with a tiny difference. And these tiny differences in computer science make all the difference. Right? So just remember, quotes. Otherwise, it becomes a name. There are operations that we can do on strings. So I can define hello plus world. And what will this give back? All together, yeah, so I was trying to trick you guys. It's going to, con it, this is called string concatenation. That's another word for string addition. Um, but notice there's no space there, right? So it's just going to collapse them together. Is that a question or a stretch? It's a stretch. Okay, so um, we do have a space, like an empty character, and the type of the empty character is string. Right, so for those of you who are used to programming in Java or C maybe, we don't have the character um, data type. Even single characters are strings, and including the empty character. So now I can define a variable called empty string, and I can throw in variables or names into string computations. So you can do the same thing with strings that you can do with numbers and bools, right? So uh, note when strings are added, a new string is created. So maybe I can show you just one thing today. I hope to show you many things today, but maybe this will be among them. <clears throat> I'm going to boot up Python here. You can actually ask for the ID. If I create a variable, you can ask for the memory location of that variable. Right, so if I create, if I ask for the ID of hello and the ID of world, I hope they'll be different. They're exactly the same. Abort! Abort! Right, don't worry about it. It didn't work. Um, what I'm trying to demonstrate through that failed demo is that when you create the sum of two strings, a new string gets created. Right? So just be careful um, in memory um, when you're creating new strings. Right? Because it could be the case that the computer just remembers that you had two strings that were connected. 
That's another way of doing it. Um, there are other operations that we can have on strings, like equality, for example. So is hello equal to hello? Okay, true. So in some systems, this wouldn't, this may not be true, right? Uh, strings get kind of fishy. You could have two similar strings living in different parts of memory, but Python just simplifies everything, right? So if two strings look exactly the same, then they're true. What about this? False, good. What about this? False. How about this? Yeah. Okay, so capital letters and small letters are, are different, right? We, we do have case sensitivity. And you can use numbers in here. Like, I think basically most stuff will be printable. So if I say print, blah, that should, yep, it worked. Or you can even throw in like all the, uh, yeah. So most of the stuff will work. Just you can print basically anything. So <laughs> this is a little bit more tricky. It's kind of fun actually. In addition to equality, we actually have inequalities on strings. So let's let's try and see if we can like backwards engineer the rules. Okay. So you shouldn't know the answer to this, right? um, but what what do you think a sensible answer to this would be? Right. It depends on how we decide to order everything. So, in my opinion, if you were to look at the alphabet, A is before B, so it's probably sensible that this should be true. Right? Okay, good. What about this? It's one or the other, mate. Right? Well, again, it depends how we choose to order these things, right? And the ordering is arbitrary. So, this is true. What about this? So like we have an ordering of these characters, and it just so happens that all of the capital letters are ordered before the capital letters. I don't think we're ever going to test you on this type of stuff. I just want to show you that these comparisons are um, possible. Because I'm going to do more. Because this is interesting. Okay, so should A be less than AA? What would be a sensible way of like ordering strings, right? So I would imagine like you have a dictionary. And those are words that are ordered. So in the dictionary, what would come first, A or AA? A. Right, so this is similar to a dictionary ordering, or graded lexical ordering is the technical mathematical definition of that. Uh, what about this? Should B be less than AA? Good. Right, because B would come after AA in the dictionary. Right? ABA is less than AB? What would come first in the dictionary, AB or ABA? AB. So this should be false. Right? What about A capital Z less than AA? True, right? So this is a weird dictionary where we have other characters. Yes? Yeah, you have, you have it swapped. Yeah. It is not the case that ABA is less than AB. Right. Cool. OK, so we have these special escape characters. Right? So if you want to type a new line or something in a string, we have a way to do it. So when you, this backslash is sort of important. So when you print something, it's not going to print everything literally. It will print everything but the backslash literally. So when it sees a backslash, uh, the computer goes, oh, OK, I'm in a string and I'm printing something. But now I've encountered a backslash, and that means I should, I'm supposed to do something special. So first of all, I'm not going to print the backslash, and I'm going to look at the character that's directly after the backslash and then do something. So in this case, a new line or a carriage return is a, is, is a type of this escape character. And it can be used in strings to print what is subsequent to the escape character on a new line. So for instance, I can say, hello escape character n world. Notice that the spacing doesn't matter, right? It's only going to, the computer is only going to look at a single character after the escape. And this is going to print something, it, actually, what will this print? No. So Python is saying, okay, you've typed this into the interpreter. Here, here it is. This is what you've typed, right? What about now? Okay, now it's going to do it like this, right? So when you're storing something as a variable, if you're storing a value by Python, it doesn't care what it is, right? So 
Python doesn't is not going. To, why would Python at this point print it on a new line, right? Python's not printing anything, right? We've been over this a hundred times, right? It's just saying, here you go. This is the literal that you've typed into the system, right? It's not actually printing it, right? When I tell it to print, now print can do its thing, right? So there's a difference here. Notice how there's quotes here, and there's no quotes down here. And so let's go into the interpreter. I can be like, this is the wrong interpreter. Let's go into the right one. Python 3. Okay, so I can type something like hello world. And you see it, uh, how it has those quotes around it? It's because I can say A is hello world. And in, it's saying, this is what you typed into the computer to set to A. If I print this instead, now it's just printing it without the quotes. Right? It's like saying, okay, there was a string in here and now I've printed it. So there, there is a minor nuance there. Okay, so let's test your knowledge. So another escape character that we have is called the tab. And a tab is a fixed amount of horizontal space. And the amount of horizontal space depends on the software that's displaying it, which is why tabs are the worst. Right? This is why there's a huge fight between programmers between tabs and spaces. Right? So I prefer using spaces because every piece of software will display a space in the same way. Those who are pro-tab, those dirty rebels, are, um, would say, well, a tab takes one character, whereas a space is four. So technically, their, their files would be smaller, but I don't think it's a worthy trade-off. OK, so I type hello, escape T, world, into the compiler, and it spits out same thing, right? OK, we're sharpening our paying attention muscles today. I print this now, and what happens? Hello, some space. Oh, I screwed up. There shouldn't be quotes there. Right? But it's going to, I think, I tried to count them. It looked like three spaces. I was expecting four, but it looked like three. Oh, OK, so let me show you what happens. I don't think I can copy this into my ID, but I can do it from here. OK, so I have print hello tab world. I'm just going to grab this. right? and pop it into VS Code. So what do you expect to see? Because I was going to throw it into here, because I wanted to count the spaces. right? And I can do it in this program, because I have hidden characters displayed. But tab is like a character in itself. right? That's why this is displaying it as like an arrow. It's saying, oh, there's a tab here, right? which is why I don't like them. Right? So if you go into your PyCharm or whatever you're using as an IDE, there's going to be some type of switch to say use tabs or use spaces. And you can pick, but you know which one that I like. Okay, so given that there's escape characters, this has a problem. Right? How would we ever print uh, slash n, slash t, or even a slash to the screen? Well, you can escape escape characters. Right? So if you have backslash backslash, the computer goes backslash, that's an escape character. What should I do? I see another backslash. Oh, I should just print a backslash. Same thing for the single quote, same thing for the double quote. So if I wanted to print literally uh, backslash n, backslash t, backslash comma, or quote, right quote, it would look like this, right? So backslash backslash gives you a single backslash, and then n, and then backslash backslash gives you a single backslash, and then a comma, or close 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 quote so I can print that and it gives me exactly what I would like right so if you may at one point want to like print out something like user forgot the new line character dash n right so in that case you would need to know this like little trick numbers versus strings three plus seven not a trick a plus to the first person who gives me the answer. 10. OK, all of you get A pluses. Well, he gets it first. You get an A minus. Yeah. You may leave now. Three, 3 plus 7. 37. Damn it. You guys are too smart for me today. Yeah, OK, so um, numbers aren't strings, right? So a string just. It doesn't matter that the string is a number in this case. It's just going to operate it on it like strings, right? When, so a plus is contextual. 
you can, if you put a plus in between integers, it does integer division. If you put a plus between strings, it does concatenation. The, the system knows how to handle these data types. What about 3 plus 7? Yeah, so like this is a mixed operation sum. So it's saying, uh, I don't know how to add an integer to a string. So try again, basically. What about string 3? So I'm going to cast the digit 3 to a string and then add 7. 37. 37 again. What about the opposite direction, 3 plus int 7? I think you, you, yeah, that surprised me. I didn't think it was going to be 10. I thought when you took an int of a character that it, the most appropriate thing to do would be to return the ASCII like representation of it. There's a giant table basically that like just says A is this number, B is this number, smiley face is this number. So I thought that int would return that, but it didn't. Because Python is special. Um, so in Python, you can int a number that's a string and it's going to convert it to a number. That's special to Python. You can do it for, if, the, if your string is a, is a valid number, uh, oh, that should be an int, not a string. Um, if your string, so int, this is wrong, int, 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 int. Um, if it's a valid number as written, it will convert it into a number. And that's sort of convenient for some types of coding. Okay? But this is only true for numbers. If I say int hello, it, it says, I don't know what, but it, like technically you could give an integer, like this is something I found surprising, that Python is not actually associating these th strings with numbers. There would be an injective way of doing it. But nonetheless, the rule is, if your string is a valid number, then it, you can integer cast it. Or this should have been a float, not an integer. Float, 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 float. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? That uh, you have this convenient way of swapping between strings and, and numbers. But strings aren't numbers. String substitution, right? There is a mechanism for printing string variables in sentences through substitution, right? So if I wanted to do, I could say x gets set to hello, y gets set to world, and I can say z and use these curly braces. Z is expecting something, o o o o blank, expecting something, d d d, and then you say dot format and you list a bunch of names or values, right? So basically, this is going to put x, okay, if I print z, I get this, right? So what it did is it went through here, and it put x into that, into that brace, and it put y into this brace, right? So if you ever wanted to, like, so this is a good way of, like, getting values from the user, and then, like, say you wanted to get the first name and the uh, phone number of the user, and then you wanted to print name, this, phone number, this, this would be a good way of doing it for all of you who are obsessed with print statements because it's the new trendy hotness. Um, no, but this is actually fairly useful. And you can actually um, do a, there's like other ways, there's other formats. You can give it like the number 10, but then instruct the print statement to print everything in binary or hex, right? So there's a lot of decorations that you could put on this. You guys aren't asking me any questions. I only have 10 slides left. Um, anyone have a question, personal or otherwise? Maybe we'll get a little bit hung up on slices. Length. OK, so there's, uh, yes, question. No, they, ha uh, OK, so. Your question is, do you have to use the curly braces? Yeah. Yes, they have to be curly braces. No other braces will work. Oh, yeah, sure. So like you want to do something like this. Yeah, uh, yeah th this thing's pretty fun. This, you can get a lot of leverage out of the print formatter. OK, so we've done that. OK, so. <clears throat> there are some like built, there are extra built in operations. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys something. We have a max operator and we have a min operator. Right? The max and min operator return the maximum number and the minimum number. So, 
I forgot to teach you this. So know that these two functions exist, and they do exactly what you would think. But let, let's take a look here. Well, I wonder what would happen if I do this. Anyone have any guesses? Do you think it would say can comp uncomparable data types? That's my guess. Yeah, uncomparable data types, right? So they don't know what the order is. But what about this? So we never actually figured out if numbers were, if numbers were bigger than letters. So who, who, anyone have a, I have no idea actually if numbers should come before letters or not. A is going to be bigger. Ah. So what about this? What, numbers than capital letters. Very cool. Anyway, so know that that exists, and um, it doesn't take two things. It takes an arbitrary amount of input, so you, you can give it a sequence like that. But I don't, I don't think you can give it a list. Let's see. Oh, no, you can. But you guys don't know what a list is yet, so, oh, but we do know what a string is. Interesting. So it gave us the lowest, it gave us the smallest character in that string. Neat. Python's a really neat language, because it, it's so... It allows you to do a lot of stuff that you can do some pretty crazy things. Okay, so anyways, we have this length operator. It's called len. It's short for length. What is the length of a single character? One. What is the length of hello? Five. I'm going to set a name, x, to world. I'm going to ask for the length of x. Five, right? It's not the length of x the name. It's the length of the thing x has been set to. And the thing x has been set to is world, which has length 5. And generally speaking, it is the case that length is, geez, what is the, well, it has the additive uh, property. Right? That is, the length of two words connected is equal to the length of the two words individually summed. Right? So length of hello world is equal to length of hello plus length of world. Okay, that, that should be pretty obvious. Yeah? Yeah, of course. Uh, like this. Yes, that would give seven. Right, because length is a function. Right? It's just like a function. It's the same type of function that we design. It's just a super important one that's available to every Python user. So functions are always evaluated to something. Right? You, can, you can basically assign anything to a name as long as it's syntactically correct. Right? So I, I can say, I can have a function, right? Uh, this is why I don't like working in the interpreter. Return x. OK, so I have a function here. And I can set that equal to a different name. And then I can use that name. A lot, a lot of stuff you can get associated to, to names. OK, so that's true. OK, so the reason that we're like now these strings are interesting, right? Because they're technically lists. And lists is already a data structure, which is super important. Um, so this is sort of like baby lists. So in addition to being a list, a list is just an ordered. So the most basic mathematical uh, object is a set. So a string is technically a set of characters with ordering. Right? So that's the difference between a list and a set. So given that a string is a collection of objects, we can use some of the set operations on them. Like specifically, we have this set operation inclusion. So in, do you know this letter that looks like this? Right? It's like the, looks like almost like the euro symbol with the missing sum. Um, so what should this be? Is H in the collection of characters represented by hello world? This is one of my favorite things in the interpreter, or in Python generally. We're going to get a lot of distance uh, by using this in, right? because uh, we can define things using set comprehension or list comprehension. So we can make very powerful statements uh, very elegantly by using language that is very analogous to mathematics, right? So th this is something that I really like, this in operator. Um, is hello in hello world? Yeah. Uh, if x is world, is x in hello world? Yes. Is ow in hello world? No, right? O space w is in hello world, right? So these spaces matter, right? It's 
sometimes students make the mistake of thinking spaces um, aren't a real character, that they should just be ignored. Okay, so here's the here's meat now. Right? It's computer science, red meat steak. Right? This is our bread and butter. It's a lot of analogies that I just mixed. But anyways, so since the string is an ordered collection of characters, we can just number the characters. Okay, But we start numbering for various reasons from zero. Right? Because we use the natural numbers, and the natural numbers start with zero. Right? So this is a mathematical... Uh, allowance. So, X is hello world. Hello world being a ordered collection of single characters. I can use square brackets now to access individual characters. So the zeroth character in hello world is H. The first character is E. The second character, L. I think I went a little too far in this. Ah, the length of X is 11. So X at the 11th character, survey says, okay, so since we're starting at zero, the last element is going to be one less than the length, All right? So if we had a word of four characters, it's zero, one, two, three. So the last thing that you can access is three, All right? So the very last element of a list is at length of X minus one. Okay, but now that I told you that, you'll, you don't have to use it because there's something really cool in Python. You can index from the back of the list, right? Which is going to save you a lot of arithmetic, right? So what? So if we're indexing from the back, the first character from the back is D. Right? The second last character is L. Jeez, this is why we don't use L as a variable because it looks so much like one. Does that make sense, right? So this, like, D would be the negative one character, L would be minus two, R would be minus three, and you just count backwards like that, right? So you can go forward from zero or backwards from negative one. Minus three would be R. Okay, so we can we can index forward, we can index index backwards, which is pretty cool. Okay, so this is where things may start getting freaky. Uh, we have this thing in Python called slicing, right? So given that these, we have a collection of ordered objects and they have indexes, there's a mechanism for selecting some of the indexes but not all of them, like taking sub-collections, like maybe the first three, the last three, every other one. And there's a very compact syntax to do this. <coughs> I'm going to change my string from hello world to the string 0, 1 through 9 because um, the index is going to match the character, right? So x of 0 in this case is 0, x of 4 is 4 in this case, right? So it's, it's better than us trying to go back to the string and counting, right? But um, it's going to work out so nicely only because I've done it like this. So you should really see these numbers as indexes into the list. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a consecutive slice. So this is a consecutive slice in the list that's going to take elements 1 through 4, but 1 through 4 exclusively, right? Which means it's not going to include the fourth element. The fourth element is sort of the boundary, right? So what is the first through fourth element exclusive on the right from x? 1, 2, 3, right? So there are 10 characters in X, right? 9 plus 0, it's 10. So if I ask for 0 through 9, what do I get? You guys are too smart for me today. Yeah, you get 0, 0 to 8. How do I get the rest? 0 through 10, which in this case would just be, oh, I should have done it differently. That would be 0 through length of x, which is why we've decided to set it up exclusively, or to exclude the right boundary, right? So we can put in the length of x and not have to account for the negative 1 difference, right? But anyway, I wouldn't even, don't do that, because the negative 1 index is always going to work, right? And I, that's a lot more elegant in my opinion. I should have made that a length of x. Anyways, 
It's going to get more hard. Okay, so there's our string again. How much time do I have? Ten minutes. Uh, is it the case that the last character in x is equal to x at the length of x minus 1? Well, I'll step through this. The length of x is 10, right? So the length of x minus 1 would be 9. And x at 9 is the last position. Right? So it, this is true. Right? So this is two equivalent ways of accessing the last element of a list, or a string in this case. And I prefer the negative indexing. Uh, I'm going to move from 3 to minus 1, excluding. Right? Same rule, right? 3 to the last character, but not including that last character. Three to eight, yeah. Right? Because the last character is nine and it's excluded. So but this is a problem, right? Suppose I wanted three to the end of the list. Right? I would expect this to work. Um, so here's how you get three to the end of the list. You just three on. Right? You don't specify any endpoint, right? Because <laughs> Lists can be infinite, right? We'll show you that later. So this is why the three on is relevant, because right? we're going to get these things called, I don't know if you're going to learn it this year, but we have these things called streams, which means that you can generate infinite lists. Okay, so what should three onward be? Well, I think I told you the answer. That's going to be the sequence, including the last character. What should this return? Everything, right? It's, it's, Okay, go, go both directions, right? Give me everything. What about <laughs> negative 7 to uh, on, right? You just have to count backwards through the list. Yeah. Huh? 3 to 9. Okay. I don't know. I think the, like this list slicing is pretty cool stuff, right? You, you, you'd be surprised the complexity of problems that you can solve simply using these patterns. Yeah. Oh, that's actually not a bad idea. Okay, so I should show you when, okay, hold on, hold on. X equals one, two. Sorry, I didn't mean to seem so surprised that you presented a good idea. <laughs> good idea from a student? I don't believe it. Um, okay, so you said something like, can we go from minus seven to seven? Sure, of course we can. But uh, more interesting, I think, would be what happens if we go from minus seven to minus five? Jeez, that worked? Oh, sorry. Minus 5 through minus 7. Yeah, you can make empty slices, right? If you're saying, I want to move in between these two, uh, you can't. <laughs> How can I explain this? I think it's better if I don't use, uh, I move from 6 to 1. Yeah. What's between 6 and 1, right, going to the right? Nothing. Nothing's between that, right? So you can actually make empty cuts, right? So the left endpoint has to be less than the right endpoint. Right, and strictly less, right? What would this be? It's it's the sixth character through the sixth character excluding the sixth character. So it's going to be nothing. Okay. Yes. We'll just add one to the right endpoint. <laughs> then you get your inclusive cuts. But it's I wouldn't do that. I would just work. This has all been set up deliberately. Because right, we're going to introduce ranges, which are also uh, right exclusive, right? So uh, someone at some point had to make a decision to let this exclude or include. And we all had a big fight, and we decided to exclude it for good reason, right? It's for good reason. So I saw a question behind as well. Oh, you want to you wanna walk backwards. Okay, you're spoiling the, the surprise. So just hang tight. Uh, anyone, anyone else? Okay. So there's our string again, and we had a question regarding walking backwards through the string. So let's see if we can figure out how to walk backwards given what I'm going to teach you now. Okay, so we've had, there's three positions here. There's the left endpoint, the right endpoint excluded, and now I've introduced the new one. And this new one is going to tell you it's a skip, right? So this is going to say go from the, go from this uh, zeroth position to the last position exclusive and give me every second character, right? So remember, inclusive 
exclusive, right? So when we start, we're going to include the left endpoint, right? So given that we're including the left endpoint, walking to nine and excluding it and printing every other character, what are we going to get from this? So I'll hint, the first character is zero, two, four, six, eight. Perfect. I'm going to go from one to the third last character, and I'm going to go by three. Okay, so the first character is one. The third last character is nine, eight, seven. So we want to go from one to seven. So we get one, four. four seven. No seven. Seven's excluded, right? Seven was on the endpoint, right? Yes. Why did I exclude the zero? Because I type this in and I don't copy it from the compiler. Okay, so let me make sure. I think there should be a zero included there, but let, let's just make sure. So I, I said it was what? Uh, zero to negative one, zero to negative one, two. Okay, great. Okay, so someone sent me an email right now that on page 20 of the slides, I'm missing a zero. Because right, this is, if I, if I have the wrong example output, this is a design. I'm serious. You, you sent me an email, page, page 20 of 23, please. <laughs> yeah. So what if you wanted to count the straight lines, you just wanted to print 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 8, 8, 8, 8. Okay, all of you are getting ahead of me, right? You, you all seem to be able to want to print a list backwards. So first let me ask this question, what does this do? And then I'll tell you how to print a list backwards, okay? Okay, so 0, 3, 6, 9, included or excluded? Included. Include. Okay, what happens if I want to print the whole list but step by negative one? Oh my god, we reversed the list. I knew you guys would be excited about this. That's why I put that annotation, right? I don't know, for those of you who are new programmers, like, reversing a list is like a typical question that we give to undergraduates. But look how easy it is in Python. I just have to step negatively through it, right? This is why Python is such a beautiful language. Because right? in any other language, this would be a complicated uh, operation. Right? But this makes sense, right? It's saying, I want you to walk the list from the left endpoints to the right endpoint included. And I want you to walk the list negatively, right? What I, oh, I forgot to pause. Okay, so you can walk backwards, but also skip, right? And notice that when we were walking backwards, the 9 is included. So we're getting 9, minus 4 is 5, minus 4 is 1, right? So you can generate pretty, pretty weird patterns, right, with this, with this kind of stuff. Any questions regarding this? Can I help you guys out? Ask a question. I, I need to kill time. I have like 10 minutes left. This is like, tw huh? Second example, this one. So this, I'm saying I want to walk the list from the first character to the third last character, which is seven, which is, and remember the right endpoint is excluded, right? So I print one, then I skip three to get to four, and then I skip three and get to seven, but seven's the endpoint, so that doesn't get included. Right? The endpoint is excluded always. Okay? Right, so, so ignoring the three, this would say get the first position to the minus third position, but the minus third position is excluded. Right? So that's one through seven, not including seven. So one through six. And then if I want to walk one through six, skipping by three, that's one and then four. 4 plus 3 is 7, and that's already excluded, right? So that's why it would only get 1 and 4. Sit down at the compiler and play with it. You'll get a good feel. Uh, one comment about strings. So strings are an immutable data type. So once you set up a string, it can't be changed. Like 2, the value of 2 can't be modified, nor 7, right, nor 15, right? So strings are, are just what you set them to. So... Um, Suppose I wanted you to sort of write me a program which changes a lowercase word to a capital word. You may be tempted to do something like this. Uh, but it's going to tell you you can't do it. Right? You cannot modify a string once it's created. 
So this is what I was saying before, right? That string operations create new strings, right? So in this case, the only way to get a capital H hello is to create a whole string, a whole new string. Right? So you have these two of them in, in space, which is not necessarily the best thing to do, uh, but it makes everything else easier. So this is also like, so you, you probably won't ever see something like this, but something you may do accidentally is set X to be a string and then try to modify the value of X somehow, right? And then get this error and you'll be like, oh, I don't understand what's happening. So just know, right? Strings are special types of lists. We cannot change the values using this indexing. When I give you lists and tuples and sets, then we will be able to modify the value of this. This is why this is sort of a baby step towards that more sophisticated structure. Okay, so don't move yet. I'm going to give you a question, but first I want to tell you what we're going to do next time. And next time we're getting if statements. So now, now I can finally do stuff, right? But barely. If I get it, once I get if statements and loops, right? Then you guys are going to get stressed out because then I can give you real questions, right? But if sta if statements, we're, we're already getting, we're already fairly there. Do you guys know what inference is? Is that a yes or a no? Like, I'm going to interpret blank stares as no. <laughs> so I'll teach you what inference is next week because I think understanding what mathematical inference is will really help you understand how if statements work. Okay, so here's a question and I'll just let you guys do it over the weekend. Uh, Write a program, do it properly with a doc string and everything, right? You have to make up a good name for it and good names for the input. So write a program that takes two strings and that returns the average length of those two strings. It's like one line you need, not including everything. You need, your body, of, your body should only have a return statement, right? That, sh that should be it. So you guys have a good weekend. Should be a hot one, yeah.